Yeah, I know it does, but I know. Okay, yes, this is it. You know why? When I read that part, I just about choked. Because there's been so much of it in there. So, who's doing this one? Before. <laughs> are we walking in with him or are you going to our seats? Reading is here, though, Pat, if you want it. Uh. Well, we still don't. Yes. Yeah, I know that. Hi. <sighs> Looks like he's grown Renee. taller. No, I haven't. He's gotten shorter. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring it back down. <laughs> this is Pat's reading. Second. Say that again. Oh, oh. The yellow one is yours. I love you. I love you. Okay. Oh, no, we got it. Me. Thank you for reaching out to me last night. I'm not going to text you that. But I got no, no, no number for you that works. No cell. <laughs> no, you sent me a new text to my cell phone. Well. And I don't text.
Dear friends, as our service now continues, we have a few guidelines. Facial masks covering the nose and the mouth must continue to be worn by everyone, whether vaccinated or not. Thank you for your compliance. When you process for Holy Communion, be sure to use the sanitation dispensers placed in the aisle. There are two communion lanes down the center aisle, and everyone will be offered communion in the hand only. We encourage you to join us in song as you are able. We kindly ask that you take this opportunity to silence your electronic devices. Now, we invite all those who are able or inclined to do so to gather outside along the Washington Avenue covered entrance in the back of the church.
Friends in Christ, on this most sacred night, we gather around this fire to begin the vigil of the Lord's resurrection in union with the whole church scattered throughout the world. Ancient Israelites, God's pillar of fire was protection by night in their flight from slavery. Throughout that night, close to the shining pillar of fire, they kept vigil on the shore of the Red Sea, waiting for the God who had delivered them to act once again. And by the first light of dawn, God split the sea in two so that the people could pass over on dry land from slavery to freedom. We too keep vigil this holy night, finding around a pillar of fire both refuge and delight. Throughout this night, we retell the sacred stories we hold dear as the precious heritage of our ancestors in the faith. Tonight, we wait alongside the font of new life for God to act again, that we may pass over through those saving waters to the banquet table of new life, the supper of the Lamb. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor. light of Christ rising dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds to our darkened church to welcome the light of Christ.
victorious from the 
accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of peace and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear friends in Christ, Please extinguish your candles and be seated. We now begin our solemn vigil. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent his son as our redeemer let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Let us listen with open hearts to the word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came, and morning followed. The first day, then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth. 
and the basin of water he called the seas. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with this seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with this seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures and on the earth, let the birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the river teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animal, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and the cattle and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give you every seed bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day.
Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? 
tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land, that I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it was so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charity charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may, f may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head toward head on toward the sea when the lord hurled them into its midst and the water flowed back it covered the chariots and the charioteers of pharaoh's whole army which had followed the israelites into the sea not a single one of them escaped but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. 
Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand. Now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth, grant that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. We 
shall draw water joyfully, singing joyfully, singing joyfully. We shall draw water joyfully from the well springs of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of our prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increased the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Oh, 
Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness, newness of life. For if, if we have grown into union with him through death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then, we have died with Christ. We believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At daybreak on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their face to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles. But their story seemed like nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down, and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Tonight we celebrate that Jesus Christ is truly risen from the dead. For more than two millennia, this belief has been proclaimed, defended, and celebrated by the Church, that after a cruel death by crucifixion, with betrayal by those closest to him, Jesus had been raised from the dead by the power of the Eternal Father. To many, this is still an outlandish claim. Many of us have seen death. We have seen its coldness and finality. So this resurrection claim can seem fanciful, even ridiculous. And yet, it's more than a claim. It's the heart of our faith. All we believe and hope is premised on the resurrection. Even the women in the gospel had no such resurrection expectation or hope. They had simply come with spices to complete the burial rites for their fallen friend. They had come with hearts broken to prepare a body for what they assumed would be his eternal rest. But instead of burial rites, spices, 
and cloths. They find themselves center stage in an event that has forever changed the course of human history. Instead of a message of death, they are entrusted with a message of life. This message of life is really one of love. It is love that propels this holy night, a love that was manifested in creation, that continued in the choice of Israel, and reached its full revelation for all nations through the person of Jesus Christ. It is a love that we recalled on Holy Thursday through the acts of washing feet and in a remembrance of his holy sacrifice. It is a love that we recalled on Good Friday, just last night, as Christ willingly gave himself up to death for our salvation. All love has its source in God, who is love itself. That love bursts into our world this holy night, bringing forth life and breaking forever the bonds of death. It's a holy love that soothes the brokenhearted, consoles the grieving, comforts the needy, and liberates all from death with its darkness and hopelessness. It is this holy love that raises Christ from the dead and offers us a share in the eternal life of God. Tonight, here, and in churches across the world, thousands of believers will for the first time be reborn in that love through the waters of baptism. Millions who have already known that love will be renewed in it. Here tonight, every human heart that has ever yearned for true peace and mercy will be offered a share in the life of Christ, a new life where death is no more and where love triumphs. The Christ we celebrate tonight is no longer Jesus of the cross. To remain at the cross would be to miss the very reason that Christ died for us and to ignore the life-giving power of God and the gospel. For tonight we celebrate the risen Christ and the power of his resurrection to change every human heart. For Christ's resurrection is the complete victory of love, reconciliation, and self-giving over the stones of sadness, despair, shame, self-hatred, and sin. Even that seeming insurmountable stone we call death, with its fear and dread, is now defeated its power smashed in the life-giving response of the Father to the self-giving of his only Son. Tonight, we are a people of hope, and I know that there is much around the world that seems to want to steal that hope away, but we are invited to share in Christ's bright promise of immortality. Like the women in tonight's gospel who found the stone already rolled away, we now have reason to hope, to be grateful, and yes, even to rejoice. In the words of St. Augustine, let us remember, we are Easter Christians, and Alleluia is our song.
Dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to newness of life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. I invite you now to stand and please respond by saying, I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Please join in sweet refreshment. <clears throat> Come to the Dear friends, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which we will sprinkle upon ourselves as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. 
Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who everywhere in the world at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Dear friends, having renewed our baptismal promises, I invite each of you to journey to this font of new life and bless yourselves with the waters that remind us of our having been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection. On this holy night, let us turn in thanksgiving and in need to the God who raised his son from the dead. For the people of God throughout the world, freed through saving waters and brought to a land of promise and hope. 
May we rejoice in this share with all others the good news of Christ risen. We pray to the Lord. For people of every race and nation created in the divine image, may God give them a renewed heart and place a renewed spirit within them. We pray to the Lord. For innocent victims of war and oppression, for priests for peace in Ukraine, among the people of Israel and the Palestinians, and among all peoples, and for people in Chicago and all urban areas who live in fear. May violence throughout our world be banished and blessed peace be forever restored. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all those throughout the world who are newly baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, May they walk always with Christ in newness of life. We pray to the Lord. For our Jewish brothers and sisters who are now celebrating Passover, may they return to their daily lives renewed in their faith and recommitted to the God of their deliverance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who feel alone or unloved, and for those who are suffering from mental, physical, or spiritual infirmity, may God's great compassion gather them into the care of this parish family and every other community of care. We pray to the Lord. For the people of St. Catherine, St. Lucy, and St. Edmund parishes, that we may always live with Easter joy and grateful hearts, striving to share the good news of Christ risen with everyone we encounter. We pray to the Lord. For our parishioners, our loved ones, and all others who suffer with illness and disease, may they experience the healing and comfort of their risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially all the deceased members of St. Catherine, St. Lucy, and St. Edmund parishes, and all of our own dearly departed. And at this Mass in particular, we remember Sidney Portier. May they share in the fullness of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, by raising Jesus from the dead, you fashioned for yourself a new people, washed in the waters of baptism, sealed with the gift of the Spirit, and called to the supper of the Lamb. In the beauty of this Easter night, set our minds on the new life to which you have called us. Place on our lips the words of witness for which you have anointed us, and ready our hearts to celebrate the Paschal Feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity, truth, and love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are brought forward and the table prepared, please join with us in singing from your worship aid, Christ be our light.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may be the working of your power, bring us to the healing of, e of eternity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and to bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with St. Catherine, St. Lucy, St. Edmund, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Dear friends, with Easter joy and with one voice as one family of God, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And I invite you all now to offer each other a sign of that peace. Come in.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in the communion hymn, which can be found in the Gather Hymnal at number 532. We'll do verses 1, 2, 3, and 9. Sons and daughters, let us sing. 
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now that we have reached the halfway point of our celebration, <laughs> Anyway, um, it is my prayer and hope, I know along with Deacon Tom from St. Edmunds and soon to be Deacon Kevin and all of the liturgical ministers who have worked so long and so hard to prepare this beautiful night for you. We wish you a happy Easter and please help me in thanking our wonderful music ministers. And we, we certainly hope you have a beautiful Easter this evening and tomorrow and for the next eight weeks. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Let us go forth singing from Gather number 540. Jesus Christ is risen today. We will sing verses 1 and 4, number 540.